All right, guys, what is up? Um, I think I'm going to do a very different kind of format of video. Uh, the last time, I think I was mentioning that I would like to kind of discuss about, you know, profit taking. What do you do with your existing crypto portfolio? And I think a lot of folks uh, did not have the chance to, you know, cash out uh, as much as they would like to. They, they, were, they were very hesitant because they felt that uh, the crypto market was uh, probably going to go uh, and continue on without any technical corrections, which wasn't the case. And I think a lot of people are kind of regretting uh, that they didn't cash out as much. Uh, the main concerns would probably be, of course, fear of missing out, FOMO. And at the same time, uh, your, your concern about short-term capital gains so I, I think in this video, I want to do it a little bit differently. I'm now just sorting out my, my collectibles, uh, which I purely built from crypto profits, right? That's something that um, I decided to do back in 2019. Um, a lot of people would probably do other things like, for example, invest in property, maybe buy uh, a new car, pay down their debt. But, you know, in my case, I just en enjoy uh, collectibles. In this case, uh, Magic the Gathering cards. So I decided probably let's kind of do a little bit of like a sorting video. And, you know, it gives me the opportunity to share my collection with you guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this, this, this collection, I started back in May 2019. Um, the decision was, okay, whatever, um, you know, profits I made uh, would always go towards, a small portion would always go towards uh, build, building this collection, right? And let's just see how it, it grows over time, whether it appreciates, whether it depreciates. At the end of the day, it's, it's a hobby, you know, and I wanted to have a hobby that is away from the computer. It gives me the opportunity to interact with people. And yeah, that's why I kind of started it, right? Because you know, you know, trading and investing in crypto, you kind of have a community, but sometimes it gets a little bit toxic if you're involved in the wrong groups and most of the discussions may not be necessarily constructive. So I decided, you know what, um, let's get back into something that I uh, am, you know, or used to be very familiar with back in the day. And I, I always enjoyed the old art. So in this case, so I, I think a lot of folks uh, may want to know what this is all about. Well, this is basically uh, Magic the Gathering, where it's an old school game. Uh, it started back in 1993, right, by Richard Garfield, and the company was called, uh, is, is still called Wizards of the Coast, right? But they are now owned by Hasbro. So in this case, uh, I was missing some kind of, you know, old feel, right? I, I, I always believe that crypto, no matter what, is all digital. At the end of the day, if I'm not a developer, right, there's only so much that I can can, you know, I, I, I can only uh, appreciate it that much. So as much as I would like to say that I'm extremely involved as an investor, as a trader, but there's no tangible aspect to it. It's just the transactions and probably writing uh, codes, smart contracts and stuff like that, that probably have real world use cases these days. But I think that I always want to come back to the basics, right? So that's why when people make, make profits in crypto, I always tell them, what do you really want, right? Is Are you going for an experience? Are you uh, looking to, to pay off debt? Are you looking to, uh, you know, move on to the next life stage, you know, getting married, uh, buying a new home, you know, owning your uh, owning a, a, a second home, a third home, investable property, stuff like that. So for me, I decided, you know, this is something that I've always wanted. I've never had the money to really own it at that time because I was only a, a secondary school kid, which was like, like at, the, at the time was like, what, maybe 13, 14 years old. So I could not afford any of all this that you're seeing right now. It was not possible. But now, uh, you know, I'm just living, reliving my childhood or my teenage dreams, right? To be able to own all this. So yeah, anyway, I just want to share it with you guys. So anyway, I'm just sorting out my, my collection, right? Uh, because all these cards are from the alpha and beta. Right, all, all are from the Alpha and Beta uh, collection. So these are collector's editions. This is, a, you know, this, this is something that I think a lot of people uh, probably saw me doing an opening video on this. I'm pretty proud to say that when I purchased this, um, you know, it was, it was very unexpected. Um, you know, the, the, guy, the guy was from the Philippines, right? And uh, he he was he was not able to sell this for some reason because well maybe he was from the Philippines I don't know but no one was buying his card you know and I and I kind of did my research uh, on on uh, on the black lotus 
uh, what happened was uh, what happened was uh, I decided to make him an offer and uh, I purchased the black lotus from him so you know uh, you know I'm not gonna go into the the details but uh, anybody can google uh, Google black lotus uh, beta black lotus and yeah you can see that it's an authentic card simply beautiful condition right uh, I made him an offer I said you know I made I made good money from all the way from when I first started crypto I said you know it's time to reward myself and I said okay finally let's let's make an offer for something that I really want uh, it's an iconic card it may not be the alpha but hey it's still an iconic card right so yeah uh, and uh, yeah it's now with me uh, yeah so this is the beta lotus um, not to mention the other stuff that I may have and will have and show you guys so you see guys locking in profit is very very important this is how I lock in profit right because firstly there are only 3,000 uh, 3,000 or 3,000 there were only 3,300 uh, black lotuses that in the beta uh, in, in, in beta right that were uh, that were printed in the world so if you ask me what's real scarcity this is real scarcity right um, you know you, you, you can tell me about a submariner a Rolex a Rolex a Rolex Daytona every year they come out with new bezels right they come out with new uh, reiterations of uh, a submariner you know it was probably uh, what it was it Starbucks Kermit you know and stuff like that you know it pre previously you have the popular ones like Batman Smurf uh, you have uh, what Pepsi you have uh, you know, I, I just c can't seem to remember every single one. But see, that that just goes to show that, okay, sure, there are unique so-called collector pieces, but there's only going to be so many in the world that that people covered, people want, right? So I, I kind of like feel that, you know, this is something where I have a little bit more attachment to and decided, you know, let's, 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 let's put some money into it. So um, these are, you know, uh, collector's edition. So these have gone up in price since the last time I purchased them, right? Now they are literally double from when I purchased them, okay? And uh, crypto has dropped like, you know, a, a little bit, you know, drop, crypto has dropped a little bit, but you know, they, they always recover. The iconic Chaos Orb, right? This literally popular, uh, very popular dual lens, all in beta, right? This is signed by Richard Garfield, right? The creator of the game. And of course, the very popular Underground Sea, right? Underground Sea is one of the most, uh, I would say, popular dual lens, right? In Magic the Gathering. Like, literally, this was a great find for me. I, I, I was, at first, a little bit hesitant because I felt like, you know, I was coming in at a point of the market where it wasn't, it wasn't optimal. It, it wasn't optimal for me to kind of buy them because I felt like, wow, these are, go these are insanely priced at the moment. So I said, you know what, let's, let's, let's get into it anyway. You know, since I was already uh, halfway through, I was collecting the revised ones, to be frank, right? And those went crazy. And I decided, you know what, let's just go for the, for the black border stuff. Let's go for the high end stuff. So I started out with revised uh, because I, I wasn't very sure how involved I would be, how invested I would be in this in this uh, in this uh, particular uh, you know in, in in Magic the Gathering. I, I really did not know because at the time I was just starting back up again, and uh, buying cardboard is very different from trading crypto, right? Firstly, to buy uh, Magic the Gathering cards is of course easier now. You know there are so many websites that you can buy from Hariruya. Card Kingdom, you know, you know, Channel Fireball, but of course nowadays Card Kingdom is one of the biggest, um, you know, in terms of in the US and probably around the world, they are very, very, very well known uh, for having large stockpiles of the old school cards, which is where the where the majority of the money I would say is kind of going right because the card value is just so astronomical, astronomical, uh, astronomically high that. If you want to kind of store value, it seems to be the place to be. You know, this is non-financial advice. And at the end of the day, I feel that if you want to, uh, if you want to kind of lock in value and you kind and you're into the whole collectible card game realm, I think this is one of the spaces. Of course, Pokemon was really hyped up hot, you know, but that's just not for me, right? That's, that's for children. You know, at the end of the day, it's for kids. I'm an adult. I, I like to play games that are, you know, that challenge you intellectually. And, and yes, guys, 
these are playable. That's the thing. You can shuffle them up and have fun. That's the thing. It's like, it's a card like uh, where I'm at. So anyway, uh, going through this, uh, going to do, do some sorting with you guys. Uh, so, for example, the Arabian Nights cards, right? Uh, like, for example, Control Magic, Copy Artifact. This I got off a very good deal, right? This is an Alpha Copy Artifact, right? Uh, it was, a, I think it was, if I'm not wrong, it was a graded copy. These, are go these have gone insane, right? But, of course, it's gone insane on a few levels because they are the revised edition unlimited and you know this is the beta and this is the alpha this is the alpha copy artifact yeah it's a very clean well kind of a little bit clean with a little bit of uh, print errors right and that's the unique thing why i kind of like it is that every single card right potentially has a unique difference there's always a little bit of uh you know uh changes to the card or there's misalignments to the font uh, there is uh, little print errors, you know, here and there, misalignments to the man mana registration, so that you know that, okay, this is from this set. Then there's a whole library of, of uh, how you say, uh, misalignments, print errors, to kind of help you identify whether this card is, is from that set, right? Because what has happened is that there are folks who take the collector's edition cards, as you can see, the corners are different. So collector's edition cards look like this. They are they are basically sharp, you know, rectangle. Whereas alpha, beta are, are cut differently. You see, like for example, this is the alpha. It's a little bit fatter around the corners. Whereas the beta cards, as you can see, are just, you know, just smoothed out. You know, they, they are just thinner in terms of the way they are cut. They look bit they look a little bit better. So yes, this is a alpha cut. So yeah, you know, it's it's stuff, it's the little, 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 little differences that kind of make you, uh, you know, try to identify what's unique about them. So yeah, I, I kind of enjoy it. Okay, so I'm going to sort this out for you guys. So for example, this is a uh, collector's edition time twister as well. This uh, has, and, and of course, if you're wondering, oh, why, why do you say this collector's edition? At the back of the card, right, right. I don't. I, it's like you can. See. So this is a near mint time twister. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty sought after, especially in the format called Commander. Um, this is a very interesting card. It's called the Mahamoti Dijin. So this is a very Aladdin-like card. One of the most fun creatures to play. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's definitely a fun creature, right? <laughs> it's it it reminds me of you know Aladdin and the Magical Lamb, the whole Arabian Nights theme, and as you can see, you know the flavor text. Yeah, it's you know one of those things. I've always wanted this card, but I was just so hesitant because there are cards that are reprinted to oblivion. That means there are many many other sets that are printed that are cheaper uh, and it's more affordable for everyone else to to kind of uh, uh, buy but you kind of always want the og stuff yeah so you know this is a very good example of that so this is the mahamoti Dijin. it's not fantastic in terms of condition i must say it's it's okay you know it's it's a little bit you know roughed up but it's it's fine you know one of those things so anyway you know guys uh, i think you all are probably wondering what am I doing with my existing crypto portfolio. The, the, the reality is that I'm doing nothing but staking. At this point in time, I'm just staking my crypto portfolio. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cash out anymore because I only cash out when there's a, a bullish mark when it's a bullish market, right? You sell into strength. And that's the good thing about um, crypto or at least being able to trade cryptocurrency. You are there's liquid when there's liquidity and there's upward market momentum you sell. You don't sell when it's coming down. You know what I mean? Like 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 for now, most of my, my group, my clients, they're all just sitting in the cryptos that uh, we feel are going to have the best long-term potential and we just stake it. We're not like panicking. We're not going to panic sell. We're not going to just offload. Um, we're just going to keep them as they are and most of them, uh, especially the folks who have bought, you know, uh, since 2019, uh, their cryptocurrency since 2019, they're, they're, not, they're, they're not panicking, guys. 
you know what I mean? Like, like if you wanted to take profit, you would have taken profit like literally either at the beginning of the year or maybe at least in March, April, right? And then from then you need uh, for your living expenses, so on and so forth, or you need to hedge and, you know, go into stuff like this, you know, whatever, whatever is your flavor, right? So mine was, you know, into magic cards, right? I decided to hedge my profits into magic cards and that's that's what I did. I think I I, I think I, I, I'm ahead, right? Because I've been building the collection since 2019. And a lot of all this has gone up in value, guys. Like, like look, okay, let's let's just maybe 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 give an example. This well, is the Arabian Night Serendip Afrique, right? When I bought this, uh I, I remember I bought it from uh, a shop on eBay. It's a it's quite a prominent shop as well with high ratings and everything. Although it has the Ensign Maddox signature, but it's a very clean Serendip Afrique, right? This cost me maybe mm, 275 USD probably or maybe a little bit lesser and uh, yeah it's it's already a easily a $600 card guys it's 600 US dollars at the moment at the time I paid what 275 on eBay I still remember uh, that was during the Christmas period I was thinking I want a play set a play set basically means four so I have the rest somewhere here but uh, yeah anyway I have four of these so it's 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 nice to always because when you play when you play in uh in in magic right you kind of want to have a play set so that you can you you can create the decks each deck is about 60 cards for example very simple stuff the very humble and you know what's this guy he always looks like one of those singers i just can't seem to put my name on it so uh you know the 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 alpha counter spell Right, being in this near mint condition. At the time when I purchased these I, I don't know, like it was less than five hundred US dollars, right? Now they are what easily going for two X, two X, one thousand two, at least at the bare minimum to one thousand three hundred US dollars. See? So it may not be as fast as crypto guys. I think the moral of this video is like I'm just telling you guys there are stuff out there. When you are thinking that you cannot cash out from crypto because you're somehow hesitant, you don't know where else to go, these are great alternatives. Like It's it's a great alternative. But of course, I don't want you to get into it just because I say so. I kind of want you to kind of get into it because, hey, you maybe maybe you used to even play this game. Or the prices are just in. It is it's pretty insane, okay? Especially in alpha or beta, right? It's pretty insane. But are there cheaper uh, formats? Well, yes, there are cheaper versions of this card, but the problem is, if you want to have some level of invest, investable, right? It's investable, it has to be in the right sets. If they are not in the right sets, you're only going to put in your money into something that's not going to be mo moving or it's going to be depreciating. That's something that I kind of don't want. That's why I'm not a very, I'm not, I'm not a car person, if you, if you ask me. I'm not a car person because in Singapore, it is not favorable to even... To be to own a car, I own a car out of need. I don't own a car because of vanity or anything like that, right? It's it's not something that I would do because we only can drive our cars for like ten years before we decide to renew the the certificate of entitlement, or we have to scrap the car for whatever scrap value there is. It's pretty sucky, man. So anyway, um, you know, this is my you know the my my blue section, right? The air elementals, all these are just you know, this is a crappy. To me, this I have not used this, uh, like ever, right? But it's just you know Richard Thomas just drew this, drew this air elemental, and I just felt it's so nice, you know. Just you just look at the, you just look at the art, guys. I mean, look look at it, just look at the art. See, it's beautiful. So you know, I decided you know I ah, just just get a playset, and this this was so cheap. At back back in the back in twenty nineteen, this was so affordable. Now it's like damn man, there was a double, easily double to triple, depending on what what is the playability of the card. So the use case of the card is also relatively important. Okay. Right. So I I kind of had a, a black staples uh, section right. So th my black cards are now in use uh, in a in my deck. So the black. The black cards that I was uh, wanting to show you guys is, where is it? 
Yes, okay, so the these are the alpha dark rituals. Okay, so I'm not going to take them out from the sleeves because I'm using them for, for play. And this was from a very nice guy in Denmark, right? Uh, so there's a format called Alpha 40 where literally loaded old guys come together and play, uh, you know, a deck of 40 alpha from him. Right, I think I bought three of this and three of this, if I remember correctly, or something like to that effect. And uh, oh wait, no, maybe this is from Singapore. This is from this. This was from from the guy from Denmark. So yeah, so this is a very iconic um card. It's called the Hypnotic Spectre. It's an annoying little fella, right? If you manage to smack someone with this, right, and the damage goes through, he loses a card. See. An opponent damaged by the Spectre must discard a card at random from his or her hand. Ignore this effect if the opponent has no... So it looks pretty cool. It's like a flying knight, right? With a spear. So yeah, so this is the Alpha Hypnotic Spectre. It's a good card, man. So a lot of the, the stuff, right? I even have... I, I even have double, guys. I have double of the card. So what, what does that mean? So for example, this is a beta and this is an alpha. So I kind of I kind of wanna wanna say that it's it's one of the best decisions I've made so far. By far. I, I have not regretted coming back into this hobby. Um, there are times when you know you keep losing and losing on in the game that you kind of want to stop playing, but after a while the itch comes back. the The ability to kind of shuffle the cards and just play them it feels good. You know what I mean? So so I bought a beta and a alpha version of of the of the the soul ring right, and you can never get enough of these soul rings because every single deck seems to want to play the soul ring or at least have it in their deck. So. You know, an alpha and a beta. So, so price wise, I would say that this is probably about maybe anywhere from 800, 800 US dollars to a thousand US dollars. This, I would say, anywhere from two thousand to maybe three thousand, two thousand five to about three thousand US dollars at this point of time. Of course, I didn't buy it for that price, but I'm just saying this is the value of it. Um, let's just see what else can I show you guys. So, the sinkholes are also alpha. Right, these are, these are, this, 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 liter this is literally detrimental for anyone who loves to play black, right? Two black, it's so devastating, especially for folks who, who kind of know how to play this game. When you deny your opponent of resources, and of course lands, right, pro produce mana for you to cast your spells, and if you can deny people of their resources, this is how, why black, pe folks just love pl playing this in mono black. Aha, uh -huh. so yes, okay, I gotta wanna have these kind of finds, right? For example, this is a nether void. So I kind of found this on a website uh in the UK, right? And uh I have three of these. It's not a very popular card compared to the Abyss. So the uh, the other legends card, right, is the Abyss. This card, right, is one of the most favorite uh, cards for people who play the deck. So the deck is basically an It's basically a, a out resource your opponent and you deny them of any of the creatures For example, the nether void on the other hand isn't as popular, but it's an I iconic card So I forgot to mention that there are certain cards that I'm showing you are part of the reserve list So the reserve list is that you are never well the company Wizards of the Coast are not allowed to reprint certain cards that are in this reserve list that makes them very scarce. So you, not only will they not be reprinted, but this is the original piece. Like you don't, you don't, you don't get to see another piece in another, um, in another uh, set. Okay. For example, the Soul Ring, which is very interesting. So the Soul Ring Alpha, and I think I showed you the Beta. And there's, you know, unlimited, revised, and there are many, many reiterations of this card. But the OG, so back to the Submariner example, right? There are certain Submariners that were made so long ago that they are more coveted 
compared to other Submariners. Correct? Same thing. There are many, many reiterations of the Daytona, but the one and only true real OG Daytona was, you know, the, the, the old school, uh, the old school Daytona. Same thing. Right, there are many reiterations of this card. This is not in the reserve list, but this is three hundred is three thousand dollars, guys. Whereas a cheaper version of this soul ring in white border, you know, could be like what? Two dollars, three dollars. Even though this card, right, even though this card has been reprinted multiple times, it doesn't mean that nobody wants it. There will be there will be people who seek the 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 vintage stuff that's that's what i'm trying to say also there are people who seek the vintage stuff that they want to have the old cards no matter whether there's a newer sexier modern art it doesn't matter there are people who have that net worth who want to own the old school cards so this is this is why you know the the alpha is is why is alpha the alpha set so coveted for this reason now of course Naturally, this isn't alpha. This is from the Legends, uh, Legends expansion. Okay, so Legends also has a X number of cards, uh, that that are in the reserve list, and this is one of them, the Abyss. So I was able to uh purchase three Abyss, right, uh, for a very very good price at the time, right, and these have already probably easily fifty percent have gone up fifty percent on top to up to two times depending on the condition of the card yep so this is the abyss now a very interesting card from legends as well it's called the mirror universe <laughs> i've done i've had this card a while and i kind of bought it like really it's really affordable by the way and uh also one of my favorite artists right uh phil foglio and uh, the other, uh, the other Foglio is Kaja Foglio, right? So this card basically <laughs> just switches the life total of your opponent, right? The moment you get, for example, the person is, you're taking on a lot of damage and the person is still having high on health. You smack this down and they have no answer. You switch the life total. So in this case, everybody starts off with 20 health. You're down to 2 uh, you're down to one or two or even three like usually that's the case for me and then when this comes down and if they have no answer to it or i have to protect this fella during the turn where, where when the opponent passes the turn over to me i can sacrifice this card right i mean like literally sacrifice and just put him ahead in health i won't be you know at risk of losing the game so yeah this is a very fun card to have uh, i bought this in a near mint condition such a beautiful piece. Also from the reserve list, the uh, it's called the Mirror Universe. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Now of course, there are many many unique other cards that uh that have uh that I have collected along the way. So let's get to those. Now, part of this collection, right, um, I actually have a, part of this collection, right, I actually have a, two, two, two very, very unique cards. Okay, ah, yes, so the three Serendip Afrits just now I was showing you, right, so the signed ones, and so this makes a playset, and, oh, okay, so these two are supposed to be in the, in the deck, so, like I mentioned, right, I always buy the alpha and the beta so that I can, you know, play more than one deck. And I kind of feel a bit annoyed to be able to switch from one, one deck to another deck. So I always have copies. So hold on. This is the beta. Give me a second, guys. I'm still here. So, 
So, right. So, as you can see, I bought these right uh, betas right back in the day when I wasn't very sure about the alphas. So I wasn't very certain because firstly, in terms of affordability, these are more affordable, but they are nowhere near cheap now. The crypto market was going up so aggressively that I felt that you know I really wanted to lock it in uh, and, and I didn't really care too much about the price because prices were skyrocketing, right? Were, were skyrocketing uh, for crypto very, very quickly. And of course, these were moving up in tandem. Now, one of the things that I wanted to observe when I entered into Magic was, was there going to be a correlation between crypto and Magic the Gathering, right? Because I kind of saw that as a potential market that most folks who are my age, right, would possibly diversify into, okay, or you want to call it divest, you know. And I was thinking, hmm, back in 2018, when the whole market crash, crypto went up. Oh, sorry. Uh, when, when the whole crypto market crashed in 2018, Magic the Gathering cards went up. And I was like, okay, that's very peculiar. And I found it very, very interesting. How is it that this could be a faster... Um, a faster asset class compared to crypto. Why are people moving out from crypto into Magic the Gathering cards? And I found out my, very much later that it wasn't just Magic the Gathering cards. There was folks who were obviously investing uh, in uh, luxury watches as well, or even, you know, for buying luxury handbags for their wives. So, you know, the in the realm of Hermes, Chanel... Um, you talk about the Rolex, uh, Rolex, the Daytonas, the uh, sorry, the Rolex, the Pates, and um, Rolex Pate and Audemars Piguet, right? So these watches on the secondary market have gone up, gone up as well, because people were locking in profits from crypto in these asset classes. So I was like, oh, okay. So I decided, you know what? For me to get serious about something, I needed to have a serious collection. You know, if, if I wasn't having skin in the game, I wouldn't bother about most of this stuff. And of course, naturally, like I said, you can just you can just buy this to play. You don't really have to put in all this money into all these things because at the end of the day, it is a card after all, right? It is a card. In essence, it's not a it's not like a watch, it's not a, a high-end piece of engineering, but the concept of how the game is engineered and structured is one of the best in the world. I must admit, I mean, you have doctors, bankers, you have literally a whole spectrum of professionals paying, playing this game. I'm not saying the average Joe cannot play this game. It's a game at the end of the day, right? As long as you understand the rules, you can read the text, you're good to go. But I'm just saying that when you're playing it at the high levels, right? The alpha, beta, you know, unlimited. When you're playing with powers, the group of folks are different, you know, just just different. It's it's like a it's like a I I, I don't want to say this, I don't want to sound like an elitist, but that's the truth, right? Everybody doesn't want to be be in the same uh in the same uh, uh, uh group all the time. They want to be moving up in life, they want to be progressing, and that's that's everybody's goal, right? Nobody wants to stay stagnant and 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 always have the same salary or in the same job or in the same uh, rank, right? They will always want to move up. They want to progress. So kind of like, I guess when you kind of see this, this kind of stuff, you, you, you kind of appreciate it a little bit more. There's a certain addition, there's a certain level of, of, uh, of, of prestige when you own alpha beta cards. This is just the truth, okay? It's just the truth, right? So anyway, yep, so this is the Alpha Beta, uh, you know, Tundras, uh, sorry, Alpha Beta, you know, um, you know, Mind Twist and, uh, and, and Demonic Tutor. Okay, and uh, yeah, this, oh, this I got at a great deal. This I got at a great deal. I want to share this one with you guys. So this card, right, basically, which is what I need more in my life balance, right, with my crazy kids and um, my, 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 my crypto lifestyle, Balance is always uh, one of those cards that I've always appreciated. Whenever I'm behind or my opponent has just overwhelmed me with multiple creatures, you, you do a balance on them, right? You clear the board. You clear, you clear whatever, whatever creatures that they have. And if you have no creatures on your side, 
it balances out, right? So it just makes everything the same. And this is a very beautiful Near Mint Alpha balance that I purchased uh, from, from a friend, uh, through a friend uh, in Singapore. Shout out to Samuel there for kind of giving me this deal, right? It's a beautiful alpha balance. I, I, would, I would even say that this is even a gradable balance. Won't come out. It's not, not going to be a PSA. You know? And grading your cards. And if, if you have cards like this, right, guys? Um, you're sitting on, on, on literally gold, okay? <laughs> it's, I, I don't want to say uh, solid gold. I would say just, you know, paper gold, you know? Because these are appreciating in value, whereas fiat is going down in value. Like nowadays, most of the Magic the Gathering traders, right, especially those who do high-end, yeah, they are, they are accepting Bitcoin and Ethereum as payment, okay? They are, accept, they are, they are now more receptive. I see more of them more willing to, to if you are like, like having Bitcoin or, or Ethereum, and, and like I said, luxury watches are also accepting Bitcoin these days, right? They, they will set aside a portion of their their um their their uh, uh the the re the revenue is going to be set aside and uh, and I think a little bit of the mar profit margins are going to be kept in Bitcoin, so this is what's happening, okay. Now uh I kind of want to sort my cards, so I was just explaining to you all. Okay, so these are a little bit unique. These are foreign black border. Okay, these are foreign black border cards. These were, okay. So this card right was one of the biggest hesitations in. In, in my magic collecting because firstly it is a reprinted card right you it's reprint, reprinted to oblivion so kind of let me give me a second guys let me just explain to you about this so this foreign black border card you know as you can see there are there are many reiterations so this is uh Jap this is japanese right it's the savannah lion so it's an iconic card but however to spend money in it i was really really very very hesitant so i bought this as a kind of substitute until i decided whether whether i wanted to to pump money into this uh, hey thanks jacob uh, i i see that you're a player you're, you're someone who appreciates the cards too so so this i, I was thinking okay this card uh, is is something that I didn't want to put in too much money into, and I was like, okay, let's let's let's. If I wanted to play the the color white, at least I have a nice art. So the good thing is that they are available in Japanese, Korean, Chinese. I think everywhere around the world has a reiteration of this in a certain language. Okay, so this is what I mean. So as uh, Jacob Phillips Phillips mentioned, right? Okay, so so Jake, Jacobs, uh, Jacobs Phillips mentioned that the swords to plowshare, this is the uh, this is the uh, beta. This is the beta. Ver uh, this is the the sorry the the FBB version, right? And uh, hold on, I wasn't I wasn't done with the story yet. So this is the beta version, and these are the alphas, right? These are the alphas. So the alpha plowshares, right? was to me one of the essentials right i wanted to make sure that i had the essentials i actually sold off my betas and uh, because i wanted to upgrade to alphas and you know just stuck with it so i bought these uh, all locally uh, thank thankfully i did and now they have all shot up crazily in value right so it's these are all practically near mint uh, near mint swords to plowshares and it's an insanely good card, right? Because it removes the the creatures from the game. Like literally anything that's annoying and it doesn't have protection from white will get removed from the game. But of course the the owner of the the owner of the, 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 the creature right will gain two health. But hey, you don't have to deal with the constant threats turn after turn. So so I, I decided to purchase the Swords to Plowshares. Um, yeah, so it was a good, in, to me, the, the value has gone up for these as well, you know, significantly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with these pur purchases. So, yeah, so, so this is, you know, the Swords to Plowshares uh, in, 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 a, in a foreign language. 
okay and of course naturally a foreign language uh, balance right so as you can see this is in Japanese see this is in Japanese All right see so the so the color scheme is slight, slightly different if you if, if you kind of notice it looks a little bit different I mean like you probably can't really see it from the from the from the sleeve but the color schemes are slightly different and foreign black border right one thing has a nice like you don't want to spend too much money foreign black border gives you that that aesthetic value for your for your uh for your for your deck you know when if, if you are let me kind of show you the difference right um okay so these are so these are so this is a revised card right so this is a revised card this is control magic you see this is a revised card so then there is the um black border version right that you can see it's just it, you can see guys it's just it's just a heck load of a difference in terms of the the color and everything it doesn't it doesn't stop you from playing the game right nobody is gonna say that oh you know you're you're playing revised we don't accept you no it doesn't matter one thing about the game is that everybody's welcome to play old school as long as they have old school cards right that's that's all that matters but sometimes you just want to pimp it up and having that that old school og original gangster kind of feel to your deck you know what i mean so these are you know this it just does it just does it for me you know what i mean I, I started out like this as well that's why i have it because i started out like this because i didn't know how serious i was i was like thinking what is this firstly how was i going to purchase the cards who am i going to purchase the cards from and at the same time how would i know how to authenticate you know how would i know how to authenticate these cards like i am so new and buying a, a card that okay for example okay i have no idea how much this card is but let's say if i was to spend a few hundred dollars for a card a card a piece of cardboard like this hey man you you guys can't really question me because you're you're buying ethereum a digital token at 2300 us dollars so let's let's not let's not comment <laughs> So let's let's say we're looking at we're looking at at a, a, a physical item here, okay? And you're completely new. You see this card for like I don't know, maybe maybe I don't know two dollars or something like that. And then this this is a this is probably a hundred no, it's a two hundred dollar card. Okay, it's a two hundred dollar card in a moment. You'll be like, damn man, I'm gonna I'm gonna just buy this. It, it's the same. And the reality is that it's not, because folks who have the money will will continue to put put in and park their funds into the alpha beta versions and that's the truth okay revise gives you a good roi because it's just just more liquid right but in terms of you know value in terms of value appreciate value appreciate is there's no harm in there's no harm in getting the uh, unlimited sets there are folks who just love the white border and and if and in unlimited you still have the power nine, you know? Correct, yes. So, so yeah, Jacob, you're right, man. There's two perspectives, the player's perspective and the collector's perspective. So I kind of have a perspective, right? That, uh, which I've come to know, and, uh, you know, you guys can can uh, can can zoom in. Players are, are, are buying the cards to play. They're not interested in, they're not really interested in um, how va how valuable it is from a monetary standpoint, but they are definitely interested to buy the cards, right, to play. They want to play the format. So it doesn't matter whether the card is beat up or not. Like it can be, you know, moderate play, heavy play, and that's significantly cheaper to acquire compared to the, um, you know, uh, LP, which is light play to near min cards that are definitely significantly more expensive. Expensive. You're looking at a spectrum of say um fifty percent. Like the the price from a heavy play damage card that is still sleeve playable. That means you put it in the sleeve. You still can see. You still can read the text and stuff. As long as it's sleeve playable, it's accepted, right? And you have the near min beautiful cards. The spectrum is like a fifty percent difference. Okay, in terms of price. So, say for example, this card is fifty dollars. A near a near mint card would be hundred dollars. You see what I'm coming from? So that's the the spectrum, but it's it's the same card, just a different condition. Okay. So, let's move on to where was I? I was in the black section. Yeah, actually, I was supposed to keep the stuff. Okay. So okay. So whites. 
uh, my balance, I'm going to put it back in. Okay, I'm going to speed a little bit up to the good stuff, guys. Give me a second. Okay, so uh, these are just staple cards that, that uh, you know, that, that uh, from whatever. Ah, so yes, so I was talking about the Savannah Lions, right? Finally, I decided, you know what? It is, I felt that I was coming to the last leg of the, te the technical bull. The technical bull, guys, the technical bull. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to spend some money and lock it in into a playset of beautiful Beta Savannah Lions. This was purchased locally. Uh, and the other three are, you know, slightly more played. So I kind of want to show that to you guys. I happen to pull out the near min one. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So uh, the played ones are from uh, Purple Mana, right? Uh, I think his name is Angkor. Uh, nice guy. Uh, runs a shop and everything. Uh, you know, you can buy from him on his website or Facebook, but still, you know, okay, so it's a little bit of edgeware here, as you can see, of course, right, it's 20 over years old, almost 30 years old, you know, these, these cards, right, the fact that they still even have them in the conditions that you see now, see, so there's a, it's, you know, you, people keep them in the binders and, it, but it just adds character, right, it just adds certain level of character to the card. It's just like, you know, vintage watches, right? They have the scratches on the bezel and stuff like that. And and, and, the, and, the, and the links. It's just the way it is. Give me a second, guys. Well, that's the thing when you do long form content. The lunch just came. So anyway, uh, yeah, so the Beta Savannah Lions, you know, White Knights, the Bolts Beta, uh, no, uh, these are Alpha Lightning Bolts, right? Signed ones, right? Signed Alpha uh, by Christopher Rush, right? Which is the artist for the Black Lotus. Uh, he has passed away. Uh, long ago, and uh, any signed ones are even more desirable, right? So, just so you know. And uh, now, I want to scan. This is signed by Daniel Gallen. So, ah, okay. Right, so, green was uh, a the initial color that I wasn't very sure on whether I wanted to play. So, I bought um, Unlimited. So, these are... These are unlimited Lenoir Elves. Okay, still looking looking pretty good, right? I only upgraded these very recently, which is in, in a box somewhere else. But you know, I'm just not not bothered. But this is unlimited, guys. The color is still vibrant, great color, but the borders are white. Okay, and only in unlimited can you still get the power nines, right? That you can still get the power nines. There's no there's no power nines in uh in uh, 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 re uh, Revised, okay? So Revised only has the dual lands, which are highly coveted, heavily heavily used and preferred by, you know, serious commander players, right? Um, so so probably maybe I just show you what, what the heck I'm talking about because maybe you're not very sure. So the power nines, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have all the power nines, right? Because like I said, it takes quite a bit of uh, time to acquire these cards. And um, you know it, it, it it's it's a uh, it's an extra it's, it's expensive guys it's expensive, right? It's crazy expensive, but I'll do my best. Okay, so the let me just show you the power nines first. Always everybody's all lost and not very sure what the power nines are. 
It's always good to have some illustrations. Okay, uh, la, 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 and then you have this, 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 and oh, okay, so the, the, the time twister, right, is here, time twister, time walk, oh, where's the ancestral recall, okay, ah, yes, okay, so these nine cards, right, make up the power nine, okay, so these nine cards make up the power nine, right, uh, the, let me tell you something about, about this first. So I had a place that, uh, I, basically I have the, the Power 9 in, all 9 of them in Collector's Edition. But for some reason, I sold off the Collector's Edition Black Lotus for an extremely unreasonably cheap price. Because at the time, I sold it just slightly after, just before the spike. And we're talking about just days before the spike. And that was a very hor very horrible feeling for me. And because of that, I was running on a proxy. The proxy was a, 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 a painted card, basically. It was just, it's just a, a painted card, right? Just to, to have makeshift until I decided to, to put the money in for an actual Black Lotus, right? And of course, these are beta as well. Um, I kind of want to show you the time walk piece because the time walk piece is really very very nice very very clean uh, it's, it's a beautiful piece uh, also from the same same seller who sold me the the, 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 beta, lo the, the beta lotus yep. other than the, the, the little nick at the top there's nothing much to this card No inking. It's it's just a it's just a clean time walk, beta time walk, you know. And uh, beta cards are actually coming off slightly at the moment. If anyone's like interested, I mean, I'm not selling my cards. I'm just saying that if you're interested, they are actually coming down uh slightly faster compared to the alpha cards. Alpha cards are holding value very very well, right? So yeah, that's that's one thing. The for example, okay, I give you an example. Like I bought this for um seventeen thousand, right? I bought this for seventeen thousand. Now it's about twelve, thirteen. So it has lost some value, right? For some reason, right? It has lost some value. Um, but you know what? It's it's okay. You know what? I it's it's one of those things. You can't be winning every single. You you can't be winning every single uh every single uh you know purchase, right? So this has gone down slightly. Right, since my purchase, but it's a very clean piece. I believe that over time it will still appreciate in value because Time Twister is a very popular card in Commander. Right, it's the only Power Nine that is playable in that format, and Commander is one of the most long run. I'm not here to, you know, flip it, uh, like tomorrow or anything like that. I'm not a flipper. I actually, I can, I can safely say I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an avid collector of the. Of, of Magic the Gathering. I, I hardly sell, guys. I hardly sell. Like, like I had a... I had 14 Gaia's Cradles, right? And I sold them all because, well, I moved to old school. So, Gaia's Cradle is also one of those cards that did, did, did extremely well during this whole bull market, you know? So, yeah. So, these... Now, um, we move on. The Ernam Dijins, Arabian Nights. Just show you the sexy stuff. Okay, so this is the um, these are my basically the alpha alpha the 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 dual lens right. So the dual lens are one of the most popular, uh, and I mean apart from the power nines right, dual lens are also one of the core uh, core pieces in Magic the Gathering because these are the OG dual lens meaning that. You can tap for two types of mana, right? And there's no uh, damage done to you or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. If I'll definitely take a look, man. Um. So the beta volcanics, right? Uh, I have uh, very in various conditions. Uh, this is a you know an MP. I guess I would say MP, right? Beta volcanic. Because you have some light scratches on it, you know. 
So yeah, this 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 is the beta volcanics. Yeah, I mean the beta volcanics were one of the last hurdles for me personally, because they are just so extremely costly that I kind of like was very very hesitant to to buy them. You know, I think anybody who knows the game knows roughly how much these are, right? So uh, this is I think a cleaner piece if I remember correctly. So yeah, this is uh, hey, <laughs> all good, man. You're 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 gonna build. You're gonna build up to that level eventually, man. Don't worry about it, man. It's not a it's not a race. It's all about it's all about just having fun and collecting and playing. We can always play online, man. Together, webcam. You know where whereby is the way to go. So yeah, so so, so I, I never had the beta volcanics. I had them in revised. Um, I bought them pretty cheap. Right, and sold them for a 50% on top right for revised volcanics um, and I didn't have the replacement so I couldn't play my rock right there was no there was no rock deck so then I decided okay you know what it's time to to start parking in some funds in and uh, yeah here I am but the slow it is yeah the correct the slower you are the more yeah that's a <laughs> That's also the truth. It's more pricey. So the Alpha uh, Tropicals, right, were were initially quite... Uh, I was a bit hesitant to buy the, the, the Alpha Tropicals because um, A, I'm not a big green player, okay? Uh, a, I, I'm not a, a big green player. So I decided, uh, you know, I just had to try to finish the damn dual lands because there are 40 of them. So I said, I, I, I wanted to do my best to, to quickly complete uh, as many as I can. So I'm still lacking on the Badlands and I'm still lacking on um, uh, Badlands and uh, Bayou. But I don't play that many of that many combinations of those colors. But I know people love Badlands and they love the Bayous because of the black element, right? Now, green, unfortunately, took a little bit of a hit, right? Uh, because I think they banned Oko or something like that. And then that, that caused the tropical islands to actually drop in value. And the tundras are now uh, second in place. The tropical islands used to be... Uh, so basically, the order is... Uh, the, the In terms of order or hierarchy is underground sea, beta volcanics, tropical island and tundra. Tundra was actually uh, behind, uh, you know, be, behind the... Uh, behind in terms of the um, value, in terms of value. But now, they are now moving up in value. Right? They are now they moved up in value. They are like now the third in third third in place. So I have a uh playset of both uh alpha and beta tundras, right? Uh where is it? Let's see now. So oh yes. Kyle, I want to show you this this as well because the the Mishra's workshop win. I don't even know what to say because I bought these like when they were like I don't know like less than less than 150 US dollars. These buggers are going for like 400 US dollars at the moment. Uh yes Jacob, I only play old school man. I don't have time to play other formats my friend. The Brain Geyser Alpha also going crazy at the moment. Uh I have no idea why um you know why 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 I mean look brain geyser is just popular in old school but it's crap in other in other formats because they are just you know they're just they're just better cards you know they're just better cards out there that do better in 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 uh, the various uh, you know uh, okay so sheesh um damn where's the cards So the other reiteration that I have is the hmm did I just misplace it? Huh. Wow, okay. Must have misplaced it. Uh there's a Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, so the Alpha Tundra. Okay, so the Alpha Tundra was to me I, because I play now nowadays I play uh, a lot of uh, white blue right so the alpha tundra 
uh, at the moment is one of my favorite uh, my favorite uh, my favorite dual lens you know I, I know everybody likes underground C but I feel that the tundra look at those cute little carabao guys look at those cute little carabao that are walking on the snow covered fields look at that aren't they adorable Niamin Tundra for you, Alpha Tundra. Right? So, <laughs> yeah, it casts the swords, that's right. <laughs> that is true. But hey, man, you can always cast the swords with the planes. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh wait, uh, another card I kind of want to show you guys um, that is in the dual in in the lens section. <sighs> Back in August, no wait, June twenty twenty. Now listen up, guys. What is real slight regret? It's the same slight regret where you saw there were four of these on Hare Ruya at seven hundred and sixty US dollars. Now obviously. Now, if you play the format, you only need one. And so, being a needs-based kind of guy, I bought only one. When I could have clearly bought everything on the site at that time. And now, this card is a $2,000 card, guys. It's easily $1,005 to $2,000, depending on condition. This is a excellent condition library of Alexandria, right, by Mark Poole. It's an excellent condition card, guys. Depending, you know, it, it was at a height, I think, 3,000 US dollars. But you know what? It, it corrects, it comes down, you know, stuff like that. But it's a library of Alexandria, right? Seven cards in hand, it taps for colorless mana. But at the same time, when you have seven cards in hand, you tap it to draw an extra card. Card draw is a key advantage in this game. So, yeah. Much regret that I did not buy more. You know, I I I am I was also uh very hesitant to buy more because of the fact that when when it comes in, there's also a uh, good services tax that uh Singaporeans have to pay seven percent. Can you imagine? You know, just you multiply that that that's just a lot of taxes uh, on import tax. US I know that you know US side doesn't have import tax whenever wherever you guys buy from. So you know it's really good. So okay, the dual lands, I have the tundras, um, the underground seas are all here, right? Uh, I had, unfortunately I had two, you know I have two signed ones and two unsigned ones. Uh, it's it's one of those things. The scrubbies are here, scrublands. Uh, you know, city of brass has gone insane. Um, scrublands alpha. The tundras. Uh, what else? Let me see. Where, where is this? Is. You know, they're all there, you know. So I kind of like want to say that, you know, I, I locked OG, OG City of Brass. At the time I purchased this was, what, 225 US dollars. 225 to 275 US dollars per City of Brass, OG. Um, and I mean, at the time, people were saying, ah, this is expensive, you know, you shouldn't be buying at these prices, you could have always got them cheaper, but you know what, I was a new, right? I, I, I didn't know exactly where to buy them cheaper. This is a little bit of a, a printing error. This is not even, a, it's not like damage, guys. It's just, it's just like a bit of a wear kind of thing, but yeah. It's still, it's still, it's still, look, look, it's, it's clean, guys. Look at it. It's clean city of brass right so i have six city of brass right uh and and these are of course right uh and and these are of course one of the most painful right because it gives you the ability to tap for any color tap uh, tap to add one mana of any color right any color fixes your deck right just in case you you didn't draw into the specific land that you need that is painless you have this to kind of help you, you know, do your stuff, but it costs you one life for every mana that you tap. But still beautiful. Mark Tedden, 
right? Same guy who draws or uh, who drew the um, the brain geyser, right? Uh, which I'm still trying to find. Okay, so the brain geyser has gone up astronomically in value as well, as I mentioned. I have the alpha and the beta, but I can't find the beta at the moment, but it doesn't matter. Um, so this will be going into the collection, into the binder because I kind of don't need so many spares. Yep. Okay. The tigers. So the plateaus, the plateaus are still one of the cheapest, uh, dual lens, but still highly favorable. These are all beta. I got one signed by Drew Tucker. Um, the alpha scrub lens. I don't know, this has been kind of going up in value lately. Um, I'm still thinking and contemplating whether to just complete the, the thing. I have two in alpha and uh, two in, wait, two in alpha and two in, no, three in, wait, maybe two in beta, three in alpha, two in alpha. I can't really remember. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. So anyway, uh, this is a very clean scrub land, alpha scrub land. And uh, the last but not least is the Savannas. So the last uh, are the Savannas. These are all in Alpha. I kind of appreciate the... I kind of always been deviating towards the lands. Because the lands are... You know, you, you firstly, you, you need four of them, right? You need four of them. Uh, unlike the... is your favorite deck color combination. So yeah, I, I kind of enjoy, I kind of enjoy, I, I, I really enjoy collecting the dual lens. Like it's, it's, it's like a great achievement to be able to hit the, 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 the 40, you know what I mean? Like have 40 dual lens. It's, in fact, if you think about it, it may be equally as costly to own 40 dual lens compared to the power nines, you know, because you, you, the power nines, although yeah, they're pretty pricey. But you just think about it, right? If a beta ancestral recall, right? Okay, if you're talking about in comparison to, to price, right? The the tundras, the underground sea, right? This wait, let me see. Maybe this makes a good thumbnail, but I might let's just put it like this. So the blue so the blue base duels, right? These four blue base duels. I can safely say, guys, it's hundred over thousand US dollars already, right? Just four of each, just this is hundred over thousand US dollars, depending on condition, right? From you know moderate play to near min, easily hundred over thousand US dollars. So can you imagine, right, that if you had the power nines, right, as well, that if you had the power nines, right, as well, just just that, okay? And the power nines, a full set of power nines, your collection is easily in the high, uh, maybe maybe about two hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand, depending on condition. Just the power, the the duels, and the and the and the power nines, not including whatever in between. Let's not talk about, let's not talk about the swords to plow shares. We don't talk about the legends cards. We don't talk about the antiqu antiquities cards. Even the suchi. Let's talk about the suchi. This fella, <laughs> this 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 cat looking thing, right? I bought it for like fifty Singapore dollars, okay. Probably works out to about thirty five US dollars at the time, and I think these are going for hundred and fifty US dollars if I'm not wrong. So this has actually appreciated in value as well because it's a reserve list card. See this weird exposed brain cat looking thing, right? Yeah, so I tell you guys, it's pretty. It's a pretty insane market if you think about it. Ah, the ever annoying city in a bottle. So folks who kind of like are always jealous of people who have the Serendips, the Juzams, the Ernams, and the City of Brass. Well, play this, and it destroys all. Or at least gets rid of all Arabian's Arabian Knights cards except for itself from the game. Well, not from the game, but at least it goes to the graveyard. 
So if you're like a sour grape kind of guy, like maybe sometimes me, and you're not one, you're not allowing all this to appear, right? The most efficient creatures. This city in the bottle will do the trick. Okay. Now another card that I kind of forgot to uh, highlight uh, to you guys, right, is um, an, uh, 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 which Edwin uh, Edwin Tracy. Oh wait, uh, just just before I go into that, this is a very beautiful Quinton Hoover sign. Quinton Hoover also has passed away. A beta wrath of God with Quinton Hoover signature. I bought this for like what five hundred US dollars. Now, obviously, the, the card itself, without the signature, is not very important. But, yeah, it is a very high, it's a very sought-after card. And, guys, sadly, my phone is about to die. So, I have to end the video here. I wanted to show you guys the Curd Apes, but uh, I don't think I can do that now. So, anyway, thank you for watching this video. See you in the next live stream, guys. God bless.